Hello everybody and welcome to Behind Berwick. My name is Cara Charlton, I'm Head of PR at Northumbria Healthcare and I'm really pleased to be joined by Marion Dixon who's our Executive Director for Nursing, Midwifery and Allied Health Professionals. And today we're going to talk about a really exciting project. We're going to talk about our new Berwick Hospital. Marion, welcome. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Now, you've lived in Berwick for a long time, so this project, which has been sort of in the planning and in the making, if you like, for decades, it's really, really close to your heart, isn't yeah. it? Yes, absolutely, uh, Cara. I've lived in Berwick for about 45 years now, trained in Edinburgh and then came down to be a staff nurse in Berwick, and then over the years went through the ranks and um, in the privileged position of being offered some promotions, took them, um, very excitedly, but always felt that Berwick was, um, you know, the sort of start of a, a big journey in my career. But very, very keen for a new hospital um, for Berwick. When I worked here as a staff nurse, um, we built little bits and pieces onto the existing infirmary at the time. But actually, over the years, it has served us very, very well. But laterally, obviously, the building is becoming old and tired, and we just need to look at modernising that. And that's when we thought, do we, do we add things further on, or do we actually rebuild? Uh, and that's where we are today with the new hospital. And just sitting in the... Because <clears throat> we're actually sitting in Berwick Hospital now, in one of the meeting rooms, Marion, and you were just saying just now that you used to have an office yes. in this room. So you've worked in lots of different bits of the hospital? That's right. Um, I was an operational services manager, so I worked with the general manager, um, Isabel Wilson, uh, up in Berwick, and uh, we are indeed in uh, the office that I sort of grew up in, in a managerial sense. So it's something that's very close to my heart. Um, plus, you know, we... At the time, Berwick had a training school. I was very keen to become um, probably like a nurse tutor, uh, but unfortunately the school closed, um, you know, the year that I was thinking of doing it, and that's really why I went into health visiting and district nursing. But delighted as part of this as well, we're building the Health and Care Academy, and we are looking to see how we can attract um, nurse trainees. That's really exciting, isn't it? Yeah. So if we focus on the um, the really exciting project now, Marina, the new hospital. So it's taken a while to get to where we are today, which is seeing the frame. It's really exciting. You look outside and you can see the frame of the new building. But can you take us back and just talk us through the different stages that we've had to go through to get to where we are? Yes. So you are right, um, this has gone on for many years and um, there's been various planning applications in over those years and I think sort of laterally uh, when it was actually decided that we would rebuild somewhere, uh, we looked at various sites um, and you know I think there was probably about five sites but the, the people of Berwick absolutely wanted it to be on the existing site of the hospital. Now that did give us a few headaches to be quite honest because um, we still needed to be um, have an operational hospital at that time because we've got a lot of services here and we wanted to negate the need for people to travel. Mm -hmm. So being obviously in the centre of the town, we also then came across um, the archaeological dig that we had to do, which um, although we'd done that previously, we hadn't done it to the extent that was needed and required. So that really delayed things probably by over a year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these people are away now. There were, you know, very interesting things that they found from the dig um, that, you know, the people of Berwick, I think, really appreciated, particularly the school children, because they came and I, I think the archaeologists, rather, were very, very keen to tell them the story of what was there. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really good. But as I say, it did delay us. And um, we then really got into what actually do we want in Berwick and I think the team have been great. It's been a real team effort from the people that work in Berwick Infirmary and that goes from anybody uh, in any of the services but also um, the consultants from Wandsbeck and North Tyneside that visit here uh, and that's in both surgery and medicine. Mm -hmm. So everybody has been able to um, give their view on things, give their suggestions, give things that maybe 
we don't want to do um, and the things that we maybe want to bring here. Mm -hmm. And I know certainly um, I work very closely um, with Alison Rain, who is doing, you know, a lot of the detailed work. Um, and she's been around the staff several times uh, just to make sure that um, we are giving the people of Berwick and the staff what we actually are needing, really for it to be fit for purpose now, but also to future proof it for the, the future. Absolutely. And when you think the archaeology, Marion, it's amazing because I think it was a fishing It's village, a little fishing and, community. Yeah, fishing community. Yes, definitely. Right? And so, you know, they got, you know, a lot of relics from the old fishing days. And the main road of Berwick went through it as well. Um, and it was a little village actually on its own mm -hmm. uh, from what we hear. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of um, things that we could take from that, from the history. I mean, Berwick is rich in history, mm -hmm. but this kind of thing, when people have actually been involved in it, seeing it, um, we've kept a number of the, the relics that we've found mm -hmm. because we want to display them in some shape or form. The archaeologists were absolutely fantastic at telling us at each stage what they were doing, what they'd found. Um, they'd found a lot to do with fish, a lot to do with horses. Because obviously in these days, you know, with the, the main road, that was where, you know, the horses came down, etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with it being on the, the edge of the, the North Sea and um, the sort of estuary, that's where the, the fishing village came from. Yeah. What I think is really special is that you've got all of that really rich history in the foundations and then we're going to build this fantastic hospital fit for the future but before we could build the building the new hospital we had to demolish Absolutely. the parts of the older yeah. hospital how did that feel for you seeing bits of it yeah being so that down? that was quite interesting and i know that um you know we had a sort of a special occasion and when Anne Marie Trevelyan came and uh, you know it was the sort of the first uh, bit of the the knockdown and you know that was quite sad i know that the the staff from around the hospital came out to see it and um, big and you know we all got shot in the digger and um, but it was one of these moments that you think actually this new hospital is going to actually happen and i think that gave a lot of relief to the people in berwick because for a number of years i think it has been knocked back from a range of issues and um, you know not necessarily anything to do with nhs but um just because of um you know the times and we were very lucky, I think, to be able to secure the hospital mm -hmm. because I know with a lot of the national funding for new hospitals, that's been capped. Yeah. So 1874, Marion, mm -hmm. 150 years ago, we started building our existing hospital. Mm -hmm. And I know that you say, you know, we've added bits on. We're going to have a fantastic modern, wonderful place for people to receive care. Can you talk us through a bit about the services that people are going to be able to access? So what we've always promised the people of Berwick is that it will be the same services and more. And that's our, been our mantra all along. There are certain things, Cara, that we can't provide, and that's generally by law and by risk. So, um, you know, things that like general anaesthetics and things like that, we cannot do. So what we decided was let's concentrate on the things that we absolutely can do and we do very well and let's increase them. So everything's as, this, as it existing previously, but we've also added a few more things that I think the people of Berwick and the surrounding area will be delighted about. And that is particularly things like endoscopy. Uh, that is obviously a very sensitive um, sort of examination that you need to get. You have to travel an hour. Um, you know, you've had some uh, pre-op stuff the night before. That's not ideal for anybody. So we've been able to secure that. We'll have a brand new endoscopy unit where we've already got the staff being trained as we speak. And that will be nurse endoscopists as well as consultants. Um, and they are really looking forward to that, definitely. <laughs> and it will also give the opportunity for people say an annex if they would like to come north or they can go south or people from Wooler, Belford, all these areas, they will have a choice whether they want to go to Annick or here. Um, and I think that's good because we're giving people opportunity. Yeah, and I think we're also looking at things like audiology and colposcopy. Yes, so colposcopy has been another thing that um, we've not had for a long time in Berwick. And, you know, a lot of gynae problems that um, 
We've got an ageing population. We've got uh, a number of retired people that live in Berwick. But we've also got um, a high proportion of uh, women. So this is something that we want to bring again. We've had to um, appoint new consultants um, as part of their remit is to specifically come to Berwick and provide the service. So delighted to say that we've already done that. Everything is in place for this to happen uh, once the new hospital um, is built. You're absolutely right about audiology, things like ophthalmology, and um, would very much like in the future to do like cataract surgery. Um, we're piloting that hexam at the moment, just to see, you know, before we um, introduce anything here, just to see that we've got a safe service, that it works, we've got all the governance in place, but we've also got the staff. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. And Marion, you touched on before, consultants love working here. Yeah. What do you think the pull is? Why do you think people love working in this hospital? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the people are a massive part in this. You know, they, um, I think they're a community, like all of our community hospitals, um, that they generally work in the hospital because they live around this area. Um, so they take a huge pride in it. Our population, our work population isn't mobile. It's quite static. And if people do go somewhere, it's generally because they want to try something different or they want to progress in another part of their career or they want to train in something. And um, it's generally not because um, they want to stand still. But our consultants, and this is across all of our services, medicine and surgery, um, paediatrics, etc. They all love coming to Berwick, I think, because it's very friendly. It's not got the, um, the urgency as this happens down in Cramlington or Wandsbeck, North Tyneside, for instance. But it's a different kind of um, way of working up here. You have to be really the sort of the jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. One day, and certainly, you know, I've been through this, as is, you know, Anna, our modern matron um, in Berwick, and our, um, our OSMs and things. Uh, one day you might have, um, you know, a member of parliament coming to meet you. Uh, the next day, You've got your head in the, in the oven looking to see what's happened to it because you've got the patients to, uh, to feed mm -hmm. and you have to be thinking on your feet all the time. And I think the team at Berwick do that exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. We've got a really good um, source of nurse practitioners that work in, in our uh, minor injuries. You know, they are pivotal to the workings of yeah. here. You know, people are always very keen that we have a full, fully-fledged um, ED. We just can't have that here. Um, we haven't got the services and we haven't got the infrastructure. So the nurse practitioners here will do whatever they can and they're really great at doing that. Um, and then they would go onward if they needed to down to the, the main site. Yeah. Now you used a word before, Marion, pride, and that's what I get when I've met people who work in this hospital. That's what really comes across to me. It doesn't matter whether they're working out patients or mm. on the ward or in oncology. When you meet them, they're really proud to care for people in their local community. Mm -hmm. What message have you got for the people who work in this um, hospital? Because they have been through a bit of disruption over the last few years. Oh, they? they absolutely have. And really, it's just to say thank you to them. Thank you for, your, for the patience. Thank you for always coming up with suggestions and um, things that maybe they challenge us on which we like and um, but things uh, that they've suggested over the years that maybe we should continue to do but things that we should maybe stop doing that we're not so good at so i think the the beauty of Berwick and the hospital and the way we're working the project is that everybody's contribution counts i think we've we've shown that with working with um with next door with Wellco square surgery mm -hmm. hillary and her team uh, that's been fantastic joint working there uh, and I think that will work really well and again looking at opportunities for training our staff you know training practice nurses but training uh, the staff at well close they are up for anything like that and we are too anything we can work jointly on I think it's economies of scale but it's also given people um, a sense of you know working together but also not duplicating things, yeah, you know, absolutely. if other people can do it, then there's plenty of work for everybody. So let's try and do things differently. One of these things, Cara, that's really important though, is if we can make these jobs as attractive as possible, people will stay. Mm -hmm. We won't lose them elsewhere. That's why we're really keen to train up our nurses and our EHPs um, to the best of their ability, 
but to the optimum level that they want to, to stay at. Absolutely, because recruitment can be a bit of a challenge, can't mm -hmm. it? So we need to kind of keep the best, Absolutely. attract and keep the yep. best people. So you mentioned well close there, um, Marion, the GP practice, just so yep. that people listening who don't know, that's actually moving into the hospital, isn't yes. it? Yes, so it's coming in with us and we're absolutely delighted about that and um, because again it's a seamless provision uh, the doctors that over there already you know work with us in the hospital uh, which is great but also and um, we've we've known them we've grown up with them for many years again carol when you were saying what you know what is it that's a wee bit different and i think you do find this in the other community hospitals as well but it's just that we have grown up as a professional family uh, we look out for each other and, um, you know, we challenge each other, you know. That's um, a good thing, though. Berwick's, uh, Berwick's <laughs> a small place yeah. when things don't quite go right. But yeah. that is what, um, you know, should be expected. Mm -hmm. And that's what we we're, we actually take pride in being able to answer questions, reflect. Have we got things right? Have we got them wrong? How can we learn and do things differently in the future? Mm -hmm. So we're nearly in the middle of January already, Marion, and we're going to be soon taking down what used to be the inpatient ward so patients that need to stay in hospital at the moment they're going to stay in a temporary ward can you tell us yeah. a bit more about that yes delighted that we've been able to source a temporary ward and it's absolutely well done to everybody involved in that because one of the things i was very very keen on is that if people move somewhere else it will be very difficult to get them back or they'll move on to other jobs we wanted to keep local people here for local services and uh, that is the staff angle of that but we also wanted to make sure the patients could be in Berwick that is their generally that is their home so again we don't you know if they need to go down to um, the more acute sites that's absolutely fine but we want them back to Berwick and um, you know to to have their visitors, to see people and to get them home into the community as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. And if we keep them here in Berwick, um, that can only be a good thing because it negates the need for people to travel. Um, the temporary ward, I have to say, is absolutely fantastic. We've had to reduce the numbers because of the size. So we've got 10 patients in there and the facilities are second to none, spacious, very um, comfortable, very warm. I spoke to the teams this morning um, and they're very happy with everything. And I think probably the biggest thing is they're happy that they were able to stay here and that the trust was able to work out something to enable them to do that. Yeah, that's great. Now, we're being really innovative as well, aren't we, with our build, Marion? Because not all of the hospital is being built on this site. Some of it has been built down the road in Cramlington. Can you tell yes. us a bit about that? Yes. So we're looking at um, what we call a modular build. We have done this previously at NSEC when we built uh, ambulatory care and it was very successful. So delighted to be working with a local firm down in Cramlington. Um, and the modules are being built as we speak at the moment. Uh, so the infrastructure is now getting up it grows every day i've had a look at it myself tonight and you just think gosh this is great and um, so once that infrastructure is up simultaneously with that we are actually building uh, the modules and i know that a lot of the teams have been down to see that i've been down myself i know you have and i know a lot of the team have and um what happens there is that can be built um inside it negates the need for any issues with the weather Bearing in mind, we had over a year for the archaeologists, so this was a big thing for us because now we know that there will be no holdups. Mm -hmm. And they put all the infrastructure in, all the electrics and utilities and everything. So then they are um, transported up from Cramlington, and it's a bit like the Coca Cola advert at Christmas. <laughs> you see all the wagons coming up, and it is very exciting. We need to involve the people in Berwick in that, and we also need to involve all the school children because this is a great thing because we did it at Ambulatory Care at um, Cramlington, and it was just wonderful. And they all come up and they actually slot in, and uh, all of a sudden you see this whole hospital. It won't be ready then, of course, because there's still everything else to do inside. Yeah. We've got the main framework of everything with the utilities, but there's still an awful lot of work there. But again, it's just that part of the journey 
that we've got the frame, we've got the modules, they'll fit together, and the, the extra demolition then will be taking place during that time. Mm -hmm. That was the reason that we really needed to move into the temporary ward, because if we hadn't, it would have elongated the process even more. Mm -hmm. So with the project of this size, Marion, people don't realise the effort, the detail, the amount of work that goes into it. And we're at a stage now where we're doing the really exciting but the internal design. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. us a bit about that? Yes, yeah. so that's where, you know, the whole team are involved. It, it doesn't matter what area they're in in the hospital. Um, if they're clinical, non-clinical, the porters, the cooks, everybody. The secretaries, um, they've all been involved in designing their individual bit. So Alison is on the what we, we call the sea sheets at the moment, and that's going down into the detail right. of what people want. So things, Cara, like where we want to position the furniture, where we have our, um, our electrics. You know, if we've got any scanning machines, for instance, how do they fit? How does the flow of the room work? all that kind of thing, really to maximise the efficiency of the build. Mm -hmm. We don't want people, you know, we even count the steps between things because we don't want people going 50 steps here, then 20 steps back, when actually, if ergonomically we can do it properly, then, or we can improve doing it, then that's what we will do. Yeah. So that's exciting. We're even down to looking at um, the textures, the furnitures and the and fittings. And the colours, Marianne, colors, always a big debate and the about colours. colours. <laughs> because obviously we need to make sure that we, you know, we tick all the boxes with things like dementia friendly. It's really, really important, this. Um, I don't think people realise the importance of colour. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they realise the importance of colour to heal uh, to keep calm and uh, things like that. So all these colours are being chosen with that in mind. And again, outside, when we come to outside, it is the importance of having, you know, nice gardens, again, to heal. That makes a big difference to patients, yeah. really. And we've had to think also, Marion, I mean, obviously we've just come through a global pandemic. So we re infection prevention control yes. is so important, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, that is absolutely correct. Um, and that's why we've got a mixture of single rooms and also of bays. Um, because that was one of the one of the reasons, um, you know, prior to the hospital being built, um, that we had some difficulties because if we had people down south into um, you know, one spec or North Tyneside, it was sometimes difficult for them to come back mm -hmm. if they had some sort of infection. Yeah. Um, so that's going to negate the need for that. And before we let you go, Marion, the big question, when do you think the first patient will be cared for in our fantastic new hospital? So all being well, if everything goes to plan, we're very much hoping it will be the summer of 2025. Fabulous. So, Marion, you've been an absolute pleasure to speak to you and we will absolutely speak to you again before then. So thank you for talking to us. To find out more information, you can log on to the Northumbria Healthcare website.